right now, Thomas Hearns is an open book for Ray Leonard, backs up against the ropes. This is one of the most unusual calls by a referee in the history of the sport. The first loss, a tremendous victory. Leonard fighting off the ropes. It happened, it happened. Never cut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson. Hooks it, right hand shot. Leonard's over, knocks out by Tyson. Wall slumps to the canvas. The champion struggles to stay on his feet. How do you like it? Welcome fight fans from another episode of BTL Boxing Podcast Legendary Nights and on today's episode as voted for by you the listeners and the users of Twitter this is Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera Mexico versus Mexico from February 2000 now before we get into the episode I want you guys to go and check us out on social media at BTR Boxing Pod and BTR Boxing Podcast on Facebook Two. So this is it. This is the next episode of Legendary Nights, and it is the tale of Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera. Tonight, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, along the fabulous strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, boxing after dark returns with a battle between two typically determined Mexican warriors: Super Bantamweight champion Eric Morales against former Super Bantamweight title holder Marco Antonio Barrera on a perfect, clear, cool night in Las Vegas. An intensely knowledgeable boxing crowd will fill the event center at the Mandalay Bay for a fight for which Mexican fans have waited several years. Johnston, this is a fight I know you've been really looking forward to. I'm really excited to be talking about this one. Morales versus Barrera, February 2000. Man, what a fight this was. Yeah, looking forward to this one, Sean. Really looking forward to this one. Um, it's, it's just a fantastic fight to, to recap on. Um, and yeah, looking forward to running for their careers and discussing this fight in particular. It's, it's a beauty. It is, and it's one that's been in the poll actually before and, and one that we were surprised had not been voted for previously. But there's that many fantastic fights that we've witnessed over the years that at some point it was bound to come up. And here it is. It was one of your uh, one of your friends and listeners to the show as well. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Adams. He put four out, uh, four fights out for the poll. Um, some four excellent, cracking fights. Um, and uh, yeah, Charlie loves his stuff. He loves the show and loves boxing. So it was great for him to to get uh, his four fights out on the poll. So please for Charlie and uh, great pick, Charlie. Yeah, big shout out to you there, Charlie. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your uh, input for the Legendary Nights episode this week. So as always, then we will cover this off in the same format which will be covering off briefly both careers of the fighters, and then we'll talk about the build-up to the fight, the fight itself, and the aftermath of the fight, as always. So, let's get into it, then. So, this was billed as Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera. So, let's start off with Morales, then. And I'll give my initial thought on, on, on Morales as, as when I actually started to pick him up as a fighter. I first picked up on Morales uh, around about the time he beat Junior Jones which was in 98 and that was when he was defending his WBC Super Bantamweight title at the time. That was the first time I seen him because obviously me being a big Naz fan as as we've talked about in the past, I was looking around at what the the Sky pundits were putting out there as potential opponents in the future for Nazim Hamed. They were talking about if he, you know, these guys move up their potential fights in the future and I remember that you know seeing Morales and I remember the, them showing clips of Morales uh, on the shows and I'm like wow this guy looks amazing you know what a fight that would be if he if he came up in weight and fought Naz unfortunately it never happened but you know it was uh, it was one of them things back then we didn't have YouTube we didn't have access to to, to, to the internet as, as it is today it was very very sparse back then so we didn't get the opportunity to be able to see what these guys were really like other than what they'd put on the telly you know on, on your own TV so that was the first time I'd seen him and then the next time I seen him was when he went in the ring with Wayne McCulloch which I thought was a, an absolutely excellent fight and one of Wayne's best performances uh, I'd, I'd seen him involved in but what were your early memories of Eric Morales and Johnston? Uh, for, for me it's a similar thing I mean I was fond of obviously Naz's career we was all watching it on terrestrial television so you know it was it was obviously earmarked for the potential opponent 
future and uh, along with Barrera and Morelli they were their names two names that were sort of mentioned quite regularly so uh, probably the same I mean I, to be honest I don't remember the Junior Jones fight so I, I don't I don't I think the Wayne McCulloch one was the one that really, you know, I started to pay more attention. Um, obviously, he was an Irish fellow, a good fighter, Wayne. And, and, and from that point, I probably thought, OK, who is this fella? And then obviously, the, the fight we're going to talk about today, um, obviously, you know, loads of people were speaking about that. I didn't watch that live, but I remember watching that after, sort of a few weeks after, because so many people were telling me about it. So, yeah, roughly around the same time, but... At, Mainly because I was following Naz at the time and, and interested in Naz's career, that's where he sort of crept up, sort of in and around what sort of late late nineties, really. So Morales made his debut in 1993, and he first came to uh, ascension really when he beat a fellow Mexican in Daniel Zaragoza, who was also he's also renowned as a famous Mexican fighter. For people that don't know, he is a really really good fighter, and that was his first major world title, the WBC Super Bantamweight title in 1997. And then, as I alluded to earlier, in 98 he fought Junior Jones, defended that title, and then continued to to defend the WBC Super bantamweight title and it was all the way up until the point of our fight which we're talking about today where he faced off against Antonio Barrera who at the time was a WBO champion but going back to obviously the fights of Junior Jones and Wayne McCullough they were two standout fights for, for you guys the listeners if you've not seen any of them particular fights they were ones that I would say you need to go back and look at on YouTube look at the way an early Morales was in the ring look at the the, the, the ring craftsmanship and, and the way he used to throw that left hand was it was unbelievable he was an unbelievable fighter basically and I'm not going to I'm not going to butter it up any more than that he was an unbelievable fighter that was as far as I was concerned but the Wayne McCulloch fight in particular was a really good fight and I've got really fond memories of, of being excited watching that particular fight and hoping the you know Wayne McCulloch the Irishman was going to be able to dethrone him and he gave him a really really good fight and for, for again for guys you you know that are listening that is one fight as well as Junior Jones I, I think were quite significant in the career of Eric Morales before we get to the fight that we're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. I mean, he spent, obviously, he started as a teenager, Eric Morales. I think he was 15 or 16 years old. I can't quite remember. He's definitely his teen. So, you know, he had he, had, he didn't really have any other... It wasn't like an Olympian. He went straight in the pros and, and straight through that Mexican... The Mexican fights, over, the Mexican scene over in Tijuana and where he was from. And obviously, as you mentioned, the uh, the Daniel Zaragoza fight was obviously a bit of a part, passing of a torch for the Mexican fan, picking up his first world title. And that is definitely a fight to go back and have a look the Daniel Zaragoza fight is an excellent fight he sort of batters him around the ring at, at points in that fight and as you, as you mentioned that, that right hand was uh, was evident on that fight in particular and obviously but it's fight John Lowry as well which I literally just noticed to be fair um, and then obviously the Junior Jones fight where you know Junior had just beaten Barrera twice so it was an interesting one uh, in, People were starting to to fixate on Barrera Morelles at the time. So him to beat Junior Jones, it really got people, especially the Mexican fans, really discussing it. And obviously, Wayne well, Kark, who had actually lost to uh, to Zaragoza himself and uh, and Prince Nazim Mohammed before going into the fight with with Barrera, um, not Barrera, sorry, with Morelles. So um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was really hotting up nicely, and uh, you know the Mexican public in particular were really really looking forward to this one and um, and obviously it was on HBO Boxing uh, After Dark which was you know a bit of a, a slow a small show if you like but what a fight to put on and they had loads of good fights so you know if anything go on YouTube and have a look at the After Dark fights on HBO because they had some months of fights on there as well Now Barrera started his career in 1989 again the Mexicans they start their careers as young as 15 and it seems to be a trend that still continues today with the likes of Canelo Alvarez he started his career at at 15 and by the time he's 21 he's accomplished like 20-30 fights it's uh, it's quite ridiculous to be honest however (laughs) you think about Barrera he started out down in the flyweight division he was winning titles Mexican super flyweight titles and then he started to come over to America in the mid 90s and started to get in the ring with some great names moved up into the super bantamweight division fought the likes of Daniel Jimenez he fought the likes of Mari Diaz uh, Agapito Sanchez Eddie Croft these were all great fights for him uh, as he picked up that WBO super bantamweight title and obviously he had that super bantamweight title for a very long period of time before he eventually went on to fight Junior Jones as we discussed 
and got disqualified in the first Junior Jones fight and then lost the unanimous decision to Junior Jones the following year in an immediate rematch of that first fight. So he lost his Super Bantamweight title that he'd held on to for, for nearly two years on a disqualification. Yeah, yeah. If, if it, again, go back and have a look at his fight. It was, it was a cracking fight, actually. Junior Jones uh, obviously taken on the, uh, the undefeated Barrera at the time. He, I think Junior Jones was... Uh, I think he had been beaten a couple of times. I can't quite remember. But, yeah, it was... Uh, it was. I think it was the fifth round stoppage. And he was caught... It's, originally, he puts Barrera down, and then Barrera gets... He's got a cut. He really takes a heavy knockdown. And then he literally did the seconds left of the fight. And uh, Junior Jones goes on the assault and just attacks him, and or you know the bells sound. His corner comes running, it he, his team come running into the ring, and he, 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 no one really knew what was going on. And um, I think even the commentators were like, "Why is he disqualifying him? He was just coming in because he felt it was unfair. You know, it was some sort of uh, lung blows involved on him. It was something in terms of they felt that he was, um, you know, being a bit dirty, basically, but." In the end, the referee disqualified him. Obviously, you can't you can't step in the ring while the fight's going on. So it's quite a funny one, really. But definitely go and have a look at that fight. So as I said, he got the immediate rematch, but he lost via unanimous decision to Junior Jones. Uh, then continued on his comeback trail in 1998. Before at the end of the year, picking the WBO title back up when it was vacated and beat Richie Wenton, and then started to move himself over throughout the career. Funnily enough, Barrera came over to the UK in 1999 when he fought Paul Lloyd at the Royal Albert Hall, defending his WBO title. So he was actually over on these shows, but again, because we never really got uh, as much exposure in terms of the platforms we have today, I never seen it. I never knew it happened, and obviously I didn't really know much about Barrera at the time. So when I look back on history and I look back on these events that have happened, I was thinking to myself... Just imagine some of the fans that would have been in in the Royal Albert Hall that night. They would have been seeing a special fighter when they probably wouldn't have known it. Yeah, completely. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, you think when when Glovkin and and lots of uh, new age come over over to these shores, it's you know we're all eager to go and watch them because you know you you you've got access to it now. You, you know when they're coming and and yeah, he would have definitely been one fighter that you know loads of people would have been eager to get tickets if they were, you know if he was a fighter around today. But um, yeah. He picked up, obviously, he looked, funny enough, after that Junior Jones fight, he actually decided to call it a day. He actually retired. So he spent a year out of the ring before he decided to come back after the sort of the second controversial defeat. And then, obviously, he came back in and he picked up his second world title, uh, become a two-time world champion of the uh, Bantamweight division when he beat Richie Wenton. And then, as you say, come over here um, a little bit under the radar. Um, and, yeah, he, he also thought um, that there was an interesting uh, fight where he'd only no contest against that Cesar Najira and uh, the California State Commission actually decided to rule that a no contest because Najira actually had a losing record and he was actually a part of Ber- uh, Barrera's team at the time so I'm not quite sure what that was about but there was some uh, some dodginess going on there. Yeah, it's a weird one that, isn't it? Because you look at the record and you look at the guys he was fighting in the lead up to that particular fight look at the record of Cesar Najira at that time in 99 when he fought him. It was record Two wins, one loss, one draw on the record. What what was all that about? The, the, that's like that's like putting a prospect in from a small hall show, you know, against the likes of a Josh Taylor or something like that. It's, it's just, it unheard and never happens. There was obviously something going on there that uh, that I'm sure people might be able to shed a little bit more light on than what we can. But the, you know, when you look back on the records, you think to yourself, it's just a, such a weird and strange blip in his record. But then it was funnily enough, it was after that fight when we get to the Morales fight so it makes me think whether that was just some sort of move around type fight you know just to get him active because he'd fought in the August of 99 and this was in the December against Najjar and then the fight with Morales obviously at this point was bubbling up anyway and it was you know it was demanded by the public and that happened in February so it's like it was some sort of maybe we're going to have a little bit of a move around here uh, but it was actually classed at the time as an official fight, but then declared a no contest afterwards. What a strange, strange event to happen. Oh, really, really weird, wasn't it? it obviously, something fishy going on, wasn't there? But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it... I mean, there was there was obviously this 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 rivalry with uh, with Morales um, because I mean I think after when when Barrera actually beat uh, Jimenez as you mentioned earlier, he was being touted as Mexico's next Chavez. So. He was the man of the moment until the Junior Jones defeat. So obviously, with Morales had you know he, he had sort of established himself 
at that point. So it, it was really, really intriguing. But yeah, really, really weird fight to have beforehand. But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter now because it was an absolute, just a wonderful fight to cover, isn't it? So we get to the fight, then we get to the build up of it. And it happened on the 19th of February. 2000 in the year 2000 the, the millennium the the, <laughs> the year the world was supposed to end all that palaver and we get an absolute <laughs> cracker of a fight between these two up in the super bantamweight division wbc and wbo titles on the line at the time we had morales undefeated in 35 fights 28 knockouts against the much more experienced marco antonio barrera who had had 49 wins two losses no draws and one no contest with 36 coming by way of knockout both of them came from respective parts of mexico morales from tijuana and Barrera from Mexico City. So this this was the fight that everybody was looking forward to. It was Mexico versus Mexico. It was the two best super bantamweights in the world. And in terms of the build-up, it was quite a fiery build-up because they really, really wanted this fight. Mexico wanted this fight. It needed this fight, in fact. And it was, it, for me, it wasn't the only fight that put Mexico on the map because there was a fight years before. Uh, I think it was Gomez versus Pinta was the, the, was the big fight in Mexico years before. But this this particular fight was was what was going to be the second coming for me of, of Mexican boxing. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, and they, they did. They have a genuine dislike for one another as well, which, which added the extra bit of spice to it. Um, obviously, as you say, um, Barrera from Mexico City, Morales from Tijuana, which is again, there's you know, there's a class issue there. There's a, there's a there's a divide, if you like, between where they've both been, where they both brought up. So, but but apparently both of them were, were keen footballers as well, were it? It was actually a few years before that we actually played a game of football, and, and I believe it was Barrera that put a dirty tackle in on on, on um, Morales, and uh, and it was from that point that they just had this genuine dislike for one another. So, you know, it's quite interesting. I mean, they were quite similar to the Brits, you know, the Mexicans. They love their football, and they love their boxing, um, and they're, they're, you know, they have that genuine. When you, you know, when you generally just dislike somebody, they just, they, you know, it, it's just there. And no matter what you're going to do about it, they just, they just can't wait to get in the ring and. and and, and beat the crap out of each other, basically. And uh, yeah, so it was obviously the, where they're from in Mexico was a, was a big thing, and also this little rivalry they had. Um, Barrera obviously being told to be the next Chavez, and then it, it sort of failing, and then um, Morales coming in and, and doing what he'd done, and was obviously undefeated at the time. So it was, yeah, it was hot up nicely, and, and and it was just you know on on HBO boxing after dark as well. What what a, what a great fight for them to have. I mean, everybody assumed it was going to be a good fight. It was a matter of will they deliver, and boy, did they deliver. Today's episode is sponsored by Bear Attack Boxing providers of high quality boxing equipment and today i want to talk about the power focus pads now they are focus pads that are ideal for training your boxing students and also for boxing training as well they've got extra thickness and they're very very shock absorbent this pad is ideal for getting them big hooks big right crosses the big uppercuts the great selection of shots thrown by fighters so guys go over and check them out www bearattackboxing.co.uk go and check out their new product which is the power focus pads only 24.99 get over there check them out check them out on social media at bear attack boxing on facebook instagram and twitter oh they certainly did and we'll move into the fight now and move into a synopsis uh, of of some of the notable rounds in the fight and the first round of the fight for me was was very significant because Barrera was the one that came out fighting like he he was the younger fresher man in this fight and what surprised me watching back on the fight was how quickly Barrera came out of the blocks against Morales Barrera wasn't actually known as being a, a fast starter he, he, he was more known for being more notoriously known for being a slow starter in fact and and when he came out of the blocks against Morales he was automatically looking back looking at the fight it feels like he he wanted to stamp his authority in the fight immediately he he, he basically come out leading with his trademark left hook to the body and obviously with Morales being a, a taller sort of more lanky target for him it was easier to to get them body shots in on the inside for him now Barrera obviously was really really fierce in this in this first round but Morales stood his ground he started throwing back some punishing combinations and he had a great right hand that he threw 
uh, and clocked Barrera with in that first round. And a solid left hook lands early for Barrera, and he knocks Morales back with the right hand. Early assault from the Mexico City star. And now Morales, understanding that Barrera has come to be aggressive, begins to look for opportunities to retaliate and lands the right uppercut. Left hook to the body by Barrera. But Barrera just continued to come forward. And as we get towards the end of the round, the, there's basically a, a point where it looked like uh, the, body, the body shots that Barrera was throwing in, they were really low at times. And there was one in particular where he threw it and it just looked like a complete low blow. And the referee obviously had to make the, the caution because M M Morales had thrown uh, a low blow back basically at Barrera so Barrera's throwing these really low body punches in and Morales obviously didn't like it Morales decides you know what I'm going to throw him one right back oh, oh, oh. low blow by Morales and Barrera grimaces in pain but keeps fighting and he gets one in it's just a complete and nut shot and the referee basically tells him you know you know I'm not having any of this but Barrera refused to touch gloves that was uh, quite an interesting end to the first round. <laughs> yeah, he didn't make much of a fuss of it either, did he, Barrera? He sort of just took it and then accepted it and then was ready to fight on. And then, as you say, Barrera told his hand out, ready for the, you know, to touch gloves and, uh, uh, for, for an apology. And Barrera just completely ignores him and just continues with what he was doing. He's working there, you know, that trademark left. Yeah, a really great start and, and a good start from, from Barrera. One thing I noticed with, with Morales, for instance, was the fact that he sort of comes out and he's looking to fight on the outside and jab him. And then all of a sudden, Barrera, just, he takes that game plan out within literally the first sort of few seconds of the fight. So, yeah, it was a, it was a quick start from Barrera, which, which as, you, as you just mentioned, was, was very unlikely for me. And then we get into the second round and it's more of the same, really. Barrera is still the one on the front foot. He's still the one throwing the great combinations. He started off quite well with a jab. He followed with a great right cross and then he threw a great left hand uppercut which basically put Morales on the back foot and you know when you see them uppercuts in boxing and you see the great shots when they land and the head goes back it was one of them types of punches that had been shown and that was just the level of intensity that Barrera had brought to the ring and at this point in the second round Morales is, is struggling to, to sort of match the intensity of Barrera. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he's sort of trying to counter him, isn't he, at times? But, um, but yeah, that was there was a stiff jab, a hard stiff jab, followed by a right hand cross, and then obviously the uppercut, which really pushed Morelos' head back. And uh, you can see Morelos was really struggling with Barrera's come forward style and his, his, his constant pressure, if you like. And um, Morelos just couldn't really adjust himself to, to keep away from him. And, uh, you know, it was pretty much two clear rounds in Barrera's favour. Um, but then oh, moving into the third round, for instance, I mean, Morella completely, you know, he switches it completely. He comes out high on his toes. He, he's all in and out. Although uh, there was great counter punching from Barrera, Morales was just, you know, he was he was switching the angles. And, and it was even a situation where Barrera throws a big, big left and he's, he's literally landed fresh air. So Morales really sort of changed his game plan, switching the angles, as I was saying, just, just being a bit more in and out. But obviously at times they're still engaging. There's still great exchanges in the third. But but Morelles was had really had a look at it and thought, you know what, he's going to switch it up a little bit, and he and he proved himself to be uh, very clever in the ring in that third round. And then we go to the fourth round. Uh, Morales uh, he lands a huge right hand on Barrera. That was the the most telling punch of the fight to date. Really, it really he really could tell it had hurt Barrera. Uh, but he's got this fantastic poker face. One thing about Barrera that I'll always say about him over his career, even up to the latter stages when he was really a, a faded version of himself, was that he had this fantastic poker face. When he got hit and hurt, you didn't actually know when he got hit and hurt because he really didn't show it. But the, the right hand that was landed on Barrera in that fourth round looked, looked pretty nasty, but he just carried on. And then he got a little bit a little bit over enthusiastic <laughs> to say the least because he tried to throw a left hook Barrera and he just went sort of flying on, on his face after losing his balance he was trying to land these heavy shots uh, but he managed to uh, he managed to get himself up and recover uh, but it wasn't a significant round it was the next round that was the most significant round and the best round of the fight and one of the best rounds of boxing I've ever seen 
Oh, it was just an epic round of boxing. Um, I mean, we all we spoke about Castillo and uh, Corellos, haven't we? But um, this is basically very similar. It's back and forth, but obviously no knockdowns and no fish. But no, it, it starts off where Barrera hurts Morelos with a, cre- a clean right hand, sort of sending him back to the rope. And it's towards the middle of the round, it's Morelos who starts to take the initiative. Landing all sorts of hooks and uppercuts on Barrera. Barrera looked hurt, and then, well, in fact, he was hurt. I mean, Morelos, he must have had sort of 20, 30 punches with belly replies, sort of Barrera was blocking the shots away. Um, and then, about, I'd say about 30 seconds of an attack from Morelos, that was when, when Barrera he throws a massive hook to the body and then a vicious right to the head, uh, which, which sends Morelos back, and it clearly affected him. Now, Morelos begins to land the right hand with greater regularity. Suddenly, the drama changes again. Morales landing five or six big right hands in this sustained rally. And another. Barrera appears to be wary, trying to weather this storm. And suddenly, at center ring, Morales takes over the fight with his right hand. And a right hand from Barrera. And now Morales is badly hurt. Morales trying to stay up. A minute to go in round five. Blood pouring out of the right nostril of Morales. Eric Morales, in his entire professional amateur career, has never tasted the canvas. He was close to it 15 seconds ago. And Morales is hurt, but again, he, he sort of manages to get his senses back and he gets himself a little braver. But then Morales starts the attack again. It, it is literally just back and forth, back and forth. And and uh, um, sort of, I think there was an incident as well where the referees had called a break and then Barrera was punched in, punched Morelos on the break. <laughs> there was no apologies then either. I mean, there was like, sort of, what, 10 seconds left of the round and they're going at it again. It was just constant. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts, Sean, in that fifth round? It was just an amazing round of boxing, wasn't it? It was. It's up there, like you say, with one of the best rounds of boxing. You mentioned Corrales, Castillo, there's Gatti Ward, there's Hagler Hearns, you know, particular rounds in them fights where people will always talk about I mean, this is one of them rounds of boxing where people will always talk about it. The way that Morales seemingly dominated Barrera, Barrera still managing to keep his guard up in that fifth round. Uh, and in some instances, in this day and age, it's another one of them situations where you think, could that have been stopped by a different referee yes it probably could have been i mean there's, there's people have, have been stopped for, people have been stopped for more i've seen well less sorry people have been stopped for less in this day and age but in that one barrera manages to like you say when he catches morales with that shot he kind of turns him and, and turns him on the ropes and then he's got he's got morales on the ropes and then it's just the, the complete back and forth throughout that fifth round was was unbelievable and it really it, it set the tone for for, for the remaining of the fight and they moved into the sixth round and after such an enthralling and enthusiastic round the both men had given it all and they started to slow down a little bit in the sixth round but Morales didn't wait long before he started to take that initiative once again starting to try and to punish Pereira with that powerful right hand of his you could see that in that sixth round that the previous round had took more out of Marco Antonio Pereira than it did out of Eric Morales and then they moved into the seventh and this is where Barrera then comes back with one of his great, fantastic left hooks to the body. It was his trademark shot, and it was his trademark shot of the night, which surprised Morales. He wasn't expecting that one to come in. I think he thought he'd been able to telegraph him, and he didn't in that instance. And he, he took a step back, and it was it was interesting because the commentator says at one point, I think it was Jim Lampley that says, punches probably hurt like the kick of a mule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was some, but I mean that left hook to the body. He was sinking him in, was he? And in fact, sort of following up with the uppercut, when he so and Morelos, as you say, he was trying to telegraph him. But cool, I mean, and he was a skinny guy, Morelos. I mean, it, to be getting hit hard by someone like Barrera, I mean, Harry didn't break or at least crack a couple of ribs. I don't know because they were some big shots going in. And, and, and again, I mean, even in that seventh, Morelos is, you know. He sort of, I think he outworks Barrera a little bit in the seventh. I think, I think as you touched on sort of in the sixth, I think Barrera decides that he's basically given a whole lot in those first five rounds. And I think that what he decides to do from this point, which is quite clever, which again you've mentioned before, Sean, with, with Sugar Ray Leonard, where he will buy his time through the fight, but in those last 30 seconds of a round, he will do his work and he will, he will try to, to, to catch the eyes of the judges. 
And I think that's what he did really well for round six, and especially in round seven. Um, where he looks tired, Morellas is dominating the round slightly, and then he comes back with three big punches, uh, right, so basically right at the end of the round. And you sort of think, oh, there wasn't much going on, but now Barrera's it, then three clean shots. Maybe you give Barrera that round. So, very clever Barrera. Even though he was tired, he was still clued up and using his head. Yeah, I know he was. And then they moved into round number eight. And Morales, again, active, starting to, 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 to land some blows. But then, obviously, Barrera again. It's just fantastic. It's, it's a fight that, and I know I've said it so many times throughout the Legendary Night series, it's, it's a fight for the ages. It's unbelievable. All them cliche sayings you want to say, this is a fight to talk about when you say it. One of my favourite <laughs> cliche sayings about fights like these is it's like a fight in a phone booth or a phone box. And this was exactly the, de- the definition of that cliche saying because these two guys at points of the fight were not taking a step back but yet were still throwing body shots, uppercuts, hooks. They were coming from all angles and it was a brilliant... Again, round eight was absolutely brilliant and both of them you know, traded really, really well. I think Morales... He's starting to play catch up a little bit at this point because, like you said, Barrera had given it, given his all in the first five rounds, and I think if you really wanted to score the fight yourself, it was difficult because when I watched back, I was looking at thinking going into that sixth round, I you could either you could either have well you could have it Morales winning three to two or Barrera winning three to two, but I had Barrera winning three to two going into that six six round, and then the seventh, eighth, and ninth, it's, I felt like Morales started to come back more. The Combinations were were were, were more free flowing. He was taking control of the fight. He was taking centre ring, but Barrera just wasn't taking that step back. So he was also fighting in, inside on the pocket and trying to get them body shots off. So going in then further into the fight, we get into round number nine and you can see at this point Morales is starting to get a little bit frustrated because he's not able to land what he wants to land on Barrera and Barrera starts to come back with a wild barrage of punches and seemingly the stronger shots between the two of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean I mean in the in the night I think Morella even gets stunned in the first minute. Um and then he sort of he recovers quickly because that's what you know the both of them do. Um and he but he, he tries to throw like those looping right hands, basically which which he he was nailing Daniel Zaragoza with early in his career. And, and that is again, like, as we've mentioned, the, the trademark left by uh, Barrera, the, the the right, that the the, the the overhand right, if you like, from Morales was his signature punch. Um, and, and Barrera again, uh, he's a great, another great round. I mean, you, you can there's, there's always these, you know, you've got to watch the fight. It's difficult to talk about it because there's so much action in the rounds. There's you have these little little break off points where they take little breathers, but then there's little spurts between them, and they just have these intriguing, engaging moments. But but Barrera again, it, he tries to, he looks to steal the round. I think, I think even though he catches Morales early in the night, Morales is stunned, but he comes back well, and he and he's really looking for that right hand, and then and then again Barrera just 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 probably nicks it by just stealing those last few round, uh, last the last few seconds of the round with. Uh, with those little spurts, basically, but it was it was a, 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 another good round, and then obviously moving on to the tenth. And I, I mean, one thing I will say is that normally when you watch sort of good fights, so you have you have these you have a start, or it starts slow, and it will get slow burning, and it it'll get better, or it be the other way around. But this fight in particular, when you actually get into the championship round, you eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, or it, it, it is just constant throughout. It's the same. It's literally you almost. Apart from the fifth, which is spectacular, but it is almost the same every round. Just constant action and great skill between the pair of them. It's just an absolute beautiful fight. So, yeah, moving into the 10th, Sean, sorry. So, moving into the 10th round then, and again, you, you kind of nailed it on the head. It is more of the same. We get more intense action. Barrera seems to be tiring a little bit. But he still remains as grounded, and 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 he stands his ground. He's no way he's, he's you know he's taking that step back. But you can see the the, the output is starting to slow down. The amount of punches he's throwing is starting to slow down. He's always trying to pick the shots off to try and punish Morales when Morales became a little bit too careless, which he did at parts of the fight. You'll see that when when you watch it. But Barrera's starting to look a little bit more weaker in the legs as the last minute comes of that tenth round and. 
then all of a sudden he just comes back with more fantastic combinations uh <laughs> nearly he nearly drops morales in round number 10 and you're just thinking to yourself oh my god barrera looked like he was potentially gonna gonna get stopped maybe in the next round or so and then all of a sudden morales is on the back foot nearly looks like he's gonna get stopped and it's just unbelievable we just we just move in again we just <laughs> we move into round number 11 <laughs> and from Looking at round number 10 where Barrera all of a sudden is, is taking control in them last that last minute to 30 seconds of the round. Round 11 starts and it's Morales again. Morales comes back, he starts out working Barrera, starts landing big right hands that really hurt Marco Antonio Barrera. But again, he shows that great poker, poker face of his. But Barrera still... He's still counter-punching, so he's still taking big shots, but he's still throwing him back constantly. And he's trying to work the body a bit more. He's trying to wear Morales down. He's trying to take the wind out of his sails to stop him from throwing some of these big shots. And the more shots that go in onto Morales' body, the more you can start to see him wince. If you watch it closely enough, you can start to see where Barrera really starts to hurt Morales in the fight. And then, as the end of the fight, uh, end of the round, sorry, comes to a close, we start to get a bit more of a close-up on Barrera's face, and you can see that there's a cut below his left eye, which is basically the amount of right hands that he took from Morales, <laughs> in particular, in that round. Oh, it, again, yeah, it was back and forth. I mean, as you say, Barrera ends the 10th brilliantly, and then Morales is back out and out working Barrera in the 11th, thinking maybe, OK... Morales is going to take control of this round, and as you say, those uh, you know the, the body shots really starting to take it. It's toll on Morales. As you mentioned, he's a lanky, skinny guy, and they're going to take effect. Jesus, you know, eleven rounds constantly taking these left, these big left hooks to the rib cage. You know, eventually you're going to start feeling it. And, it. and the aim was obviously to try and slow him down. Because obviously, Pereira being the old fight, although more experienced, obviously trying to trying to outwork and sort of old man Morales, if you like. But um, and then, and then obviously we draw into the twelfth round, and, and finally after you know a couple of situations where you know Pereira's ignored the gloves. I think you know as the round begins, you know they finally sort of touch gloves and, uh, and Barrera just sort of gives him a, uh, Morelli's a nod of acknowledgement for his performance um, and it, yeah and again it, it <laughs> it's sort of at this moment but it slowed down a bit rightly so because they've just put on an absolute belt and never ran the boxing but um, and it was it, it, you know, they would have their moments they sort of have a little breathe and then just go again and it was it was basically that was pretty much the 12th round um, and then obviously it leads to the point where did Morales really go down was it a slip I mean, there was a big big left hand from um, from Barrera on Morales probably about sort of five seconds before it and I think it takes a lot out of him but for me I think I, I don't think it was a, I don't think it was rightly called a knockdown for me I think Morelles is it's more of a slip he's almost went gone to grab him and he's sort of gone down but I don't know what's your thoughts on did he, did he go down I don't know I, I think I thought more if, he should have just really just the referee should have just left it and just let him carry on Here's the first knockdown of Eric Morales' oh. career in the fight. That could be the difference in the fight. I didn't see the punch that a little left that hand inside. Now Morales knows he's got to do something dramatic right back and he's only got 15 seconds to do it. I, I Looking back on it recently for, for, for the podcast, I noticed that that particular incident happened and it was quite controversial because it would have an impact on the scoring for the fight, of course, because that would automatically make it a 10-8 round. But what it looked like is that Barrera was throwing the shots in. It looked like it might have sort of caught the glove a little bit and sort of skimmed onto onto the chin. But it didn't look like it was significant enough to have actually knocked him down, in, in my opinion. Yeah. It looked like it was sort of a scuffing, scuffing blow, which I think it, it looked more like exhaustion than anything else, if I'm being honest with you. And, and it looked like his legs, his, his legs had just gone from exhaustion as opposed to the punch actually having, having an effect as such and we'll, we'll obviously never know to this day exactly what it was whether it was exhaustion or whether it was him getting caught with with a punch but the referee looks straight at it and goes no that's you know that's counting and then you've got Morales going back to the the, the, the neutral corner going no nope, I didn't slip I didn't slip you know it was a, well I didn't get knocked down it was a slip it was a slip and he's, he's, he's pleading with the referee but he still survived he still survived the yeah. round after numerous back and forth between one another. What had happened then is 
knowing that that was going to be classed as a knockdown, Morales come running out of the corner, running straight towards Barrera, and I mean practically running to go straight at him and throw punches from all sorts of angles, but Barrera was going to stand his ground, and of course, it led to a fantastic final 20 seconds of, of the round, because they were both throwing shots, and even uh, Larry Merchant is counting down, he's saying like, Morales has only got 15 seconds left to do something significant in this fight, and he couldn't he couldn't get anything off significant enough to, to score a knockdown himself. So the bell goes, that's the end of the fight. Well, it's fine. I think Barrera won it. I think Barrera won it. A brilliant front round performance by Marco Antonio Barrera. Fabulous fight. And then Jim Lampley's basically saying Barrera's won, Barrera's won. You know, that was his first initial reaction when the final bell went. Harold Leatherman, you know, does all the scores. The, the, the late, great Harold Leatherman, he did all the scores for HBO and his scorecard had Barrera in front. And then we got to the scorecards, which was another situation. <laughs> we go to the scorecards and we have a split decision. Dwayne Ford scores the bout, 114 to 113 for Barrera. Harold Castellano scores the bout, 114 to 113 for Morales. And Dalby Shirley scores the bout, 115 to 112 for the unified champion by split decision, De Sonanotre, Tijuana, Mexico, Eric. Terrible Morale! Yeah, um, I, I, it was. It, I was as I've watched the fight again. I, I did. I decided to score it. To be honest, it's probably the first I've ever done it um, because I just enjoy the fight. I, it, it's almost like because these two guys are pulling. Like, they put it out, didn't they? I mean, they they literally went for broke the pair of them, and then they both deserve to win. And you know, no, I hate to sort of be the guy to sit on the fence, but I think a score draw is probably. A right thing. I think a, a, a draw would have been a, the best outcome for the whole thing. Um, maybe. I mean, I when I when I do score it, I score it in favour of Pereira. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the score it was it, one went. Was it was it what it was a one one fourteen one one fifteen Pereira one one fourteen one one thirteen Morales and then I can't remember what was it one one sixteen. What was what was the third card? I can't remember one one sixteen something. I haven't got one one fifteen one twelve the final card to Morales, which. Which, looking back on that, I felt that like was a bit harsh on, on Barrera, to be honest yeah. with you. The, the first two cards were probably right and could have been scored either way, but that third and final card was the one that was significant. It was basically three rounds given to three rounds over Barrera that Morales was being told he had by that judge. And it was significant because a lot of people felt like Barrera had actually won that fight. Harold Letterman, what about three judges who saw it that way? Well, you know, Jim, there's going to be plenty of controversy over this one. Certainly, Marco Antonio Barrera down the championship rounds, forced the fight, took it to him, stunned him on numerous occasions. I mean, there was no possible way with a 10-8 round and a 12, you could give it to Eric Morales. I disagree totally. Absolutely, and I, th- I think he did. I mean, uh, saying that, I mean, I don't think the last round should have been scored a knockdown. So it, on my card, that would be a draw straight away because that that'd be that would have been a 10 out, ten eight round to Barrera. But in uh, saying that, I don't know. I mean, I've been thinking about it. I mean, it's a pretty close round the last round. I mean, could it have gone Barrera? So maybe I w- I'd, I'd just because it's just an epic fight, I would always edge to the draw. I'd remove that knockdown. I'd make that a ten nine round to Barrera. And then it'd be a, it'd be one one uh, thirty one one thirty I think on my card or one one forty one one forty. Um, so yeah, I, I think that would have been a fair result. But saying that there was a you know the controversy was Marez probably shouldn't have got it. I, I mean most people did have Barrera down. I think Barrera probably did enough to do it. Um, but you know it's, it doesn't matter now because we get we, we had the chance to see three three excellent fights and you know this one for me was the best one. I, I do always regard this as as better than the other two. But that is by no means saying, just watch the first one. Go and watch all three. If anyone's ever seen them, please watch the second, watch the third. And they're all excellent fights. Uh, They've all got shadows of the first, but the first in particular, and that fifth round, was just outstanding. 
people label this as one of the best fights of all time and certainly the best fight of the trilogy between the two and in the aftermath of this particular fight they wouldn't go on to have an immediate rematch they'd actually fight again two years later where Morales would eventually lose his WBC featherweight title to Marco Antonio Barrera and then they wouldn't fight again to 2004 in which the final fight in their trilogy happened and again this time Marco Antonio Barrera got a majority decision over Eric Morales and then not to touch too deeply into it all but Morales would then go in and fight Manny Pacquiao in some fantastic fights on three occasions he'd make his early retirement in 2007 come back for a second win in 2010 and then eventually retire in 2012 after two great fights with Danny Garcia so honestly it's uh it's it's quite a, an amazing career and a story career he has you know he, he eventually finished his career in the super lightweight division the old light welterweight 140 pounds and he would eventually go in there and fight for for, for their titles which was I thought I thought was was unbelievable when I seen him come back after you know essentially fighting in these epic wars with the likes of Barrera and Pacquiao it was it was unbelievable as well and I think the Madonna fight was also a really good one Marcus Madonna in 2011 was also a great one for, for Morales to look back on as well oh absolutely yeah uh, he had some some fantastic fights I mean, he beat Manny Pacquiao that's a, the first one in particular he, he puts on a great show and then decides in that last round he's just going to go for you know to, just to give the fans that they want to have a bit of action in that last round because that was the sort of person the real was you know it was a, he was the first he'd become the first Mexican in winning four World titles in four different uh, weight divisions. You know, he's got untold fights of the year. Fights of the year, sorry. Um, throughout his whole resume. I mean, I mean, as you say, you mentioned the, the, the Barrera one. But, I mean, the, the second and the third of Barrera. But, obviously, Manny Pacquiao as well. And, and the one thing is, with, with that Manny Pacquiao victory, the first fight, I mean, people don't think... I think Pacquiao had just got the draw with Marquez. So, you know, it, it was it was a funny one. I think the rematch was due to happen. So this was the first Marquez-Pacquiao fight, which is a controversial draw because Pacquiao knocks him down a few times in the first round. So so it was looking like that was going to be a rematch. It didn't happen. And then obviously Eric Morello steps in to fight Manny Pacquiao. But when uh, they fight the second time, I mean, if anyone ever... Just look at Manny Pacquiao's record from that point when he beats... Uh, Eric Morelles in the rematch and he's got this amazing sequence I know we're talking about Morelles and we're talking about Pereira but Pacquiao has this amazing amazing sequence where he fights so many literally outstanding fighters you know after beating uh, Morelles he ends up beating Morelles again beats Pereira he beats Marquez twice he beats De La Hoya he beats Hatton he beats Cotto he beats Mosley he beats Margarita I mean it is unbelievable sequence so I think where Morelia's come out of that fight against Pacquiao, losing a back-to-back, I think he felt a little bit like, oh, I need to call it a day. But in actual fact, what he didn't realise is he's probably fighting the best Manny Pacquiao. You know, it, that was it, it, the best version of Manny Pacquiao you've ever seen. And um, so if it was those two defeats in particular, those back-to-back defeats against Manny Pacquiao, he should not be down on himself with because... We're talking about Manny Pacquiao. That was unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable fighter indeed. And Barrera's career wasn't too dissimilar because Barrera went on after the fight, first fight with Morales. He went on to beat Nazim Hamed, as we know, and then he went on to fight Barrera. Uh, uh, Eric Morales, and then he beat his, you know, one of his own heroes, which was Johnny Tapia in 2002. Kevin Kelly, Manny Pacquiao, fight with Morales again. Uh, Rocky Juraz, that was a uh, cracking two fights there in 2006 for the super featherweight title. Uh, Pacquiao again in 2007, he lost in a unanimous decision. And then this is really where I say. After that Pacquiao loss is where I would have said you need to call it a day now because after that, really, he doesn't have any notable wins on his record. He does come over once more to England, to Manchester, to the MEN Arena to fight Amir Khan and that was declared a technical draw due to a, a, a quite a huge nasty cut on the eye of Marco Antonio Barrera and Khan got a massive scalp on his record at this point in 2009. He eventually came back, had two more fights, retired in 2011 but again just another fantastic Mexican fighter who provided us with so many memorable nights whether he won or lost he was still involved in some memorable fights wasn't he oh absolutely absolutely i mean he, as you say when he beat hamid didn't he stopped hamid for 
and his only defeat. And, and, and obviously, he, he basically retired, Nazim Hamid, picking up his second world title and a second different weight class again. And as you say, you know, obviously, he got the two wins eventually over Morelles. The second one, probably more controversial. In fact, I thought Morelles won the second fight. And then the third fight was a close fight, but it, was, it wasn't it was as controversial. Guerrero, I think, deserved to get the nod. The Pacquiao fight before the third Morelles fight. <laughs> I forget, in the end, he's called Finn Tao. Um, and then, obviously, one Manuel Marquez is in there, which was also a bit of a controversial decision because there was, a, in the seventh round in particular, Barrera catches Marquez and, and Marquez goes down um, and the referee deems it a slip. So it's the other way, it's vice versa compared to what happened in, in the last round of, of the one we just spoke about. So, you know, and, and then, obviously, he loses again to Manny Pacquiao, beat Vincent Lee. Um, and then, obviously, the Khan fight... I, by then, I think I'm with it. The second Pacquiao fight, I think that should have been it. I think he should have called it a day on his career. But he comes out. He was, you know, he wanted to. He thought maybe he could get that, you know, that that one last title, if you like, against Amir Khan. But obviously, unfortunately, he got that really bad. It was an horrible cut, wasn't it? I remember watching yeah. that fight myself. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was well pleased for Khan, obviously, getting that massive name on his record. But. Uh, you know, Mark Antonio Barrera, he held multiple world titles in three different weight classes. I mean, the guy has been in some wars and he was just a pleasure to watch. And for anyone that doesn't know about him or doesn't know about the, the fighters he's fought for like, his career, please go back and have a look on YouTube because it's just great viewing. A little no, known fact about this particular bill of Morales versus Barrera, that two in particular fighters were on the undercard as well. And Mr. Antonio Margarito took on Sergio Martinez and that was in the super welterweight division, which is the old light middleweight division. And Margarito stopped Martinez in seven rounds, which... Again, I never knew because I never remember watching the fight at the time it happened. I watched it after the fight happened. So when I looked back and I looked in history and I did the research for the episode and I was looking back on YouTube, I was like, no way did Margarito beat Martinez on the undercard of one of the greatest fights of all time. I never knew it. Oh, I, I didn't know that until I literally spoke to you this evening, so <laughs> thanks for that. I never knew that at all, right? That's incredible, really. Yeah, that is, that is amazing, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I never knew that. Never knew that. So, we've just covered one of the greatest fights of all time. It was a fantastic night, a legendary night for sure. We really enjoyed covering this. Uh, and obviously, a big shout out to Charlie who gave us the poll which got us this fight which gave us a great episode to talk about two fantastic Mexican warriors in one of the greatest fights uh, I've ever witnessed and probably one of the greatest fights you'll see for a long long time I mean think about this this fight happened 19 years ago 19 years ago and we're still sat here talking about it like it was yesterday like it was a fight we'd only recently seen yesterday it was an unbelievable fight and one that I'm really pleased to have covered there was there was one there was a nice fashion I mean just just I mean in 2000 it was good obviously given Friday by Ring Magazine and obviously the fifth round was Ring Ring Magazine but that was the fifth the fifth round was was their round of the year as well so they cleaned up clean sweep with the Ring Magazine and I think they was even voted as the fight of the century at one point by I'm not sure it was Ring Magazine I'm not quite sure who gave them that reward but you know that's that's, that's, that that doesn't surprise me because it's just an absolute beautiful fight to watch but the nice touch of it was that Barrera also he was the one that in, that, that inducted Morelos into the Hall of Fame as well. So I, I just picked up on that. I was across on, on YouTube somewhere. So it was a nice little touch. And they are good friends today. So all the hatred that was between them at the time, they're, um, they're actually quite good friends. And I think that tends to happen, doesn't it? You, you get these wars and then they end up, end up you know, becoming mates because it's just, you know, you, you've spent 30, what is it? No, the, you know, three fights and it, it's just, you're gone. I just, you know, it, it's weird, isn't it? You know, you think of, Marco Antonio Barrera and you think of Eric Morales and two unbelievable fighters and it's just a pleasure to cover yeah cheers two, two, two men that shared 36 rounds together and obviously the induction into the Hall of Fame it was just a, an unbelievable storied ending really for, for the pair of them when it came to their boxing careers and fantastic episodes to have covered so if you've enjoyed this episode and as always enjoyed listening to the Legendary Night series then please let us know your thoughts on it, go on to Twitter and tweet us at BTR Boxing Pod, let us know if you're really enjoying the series, if there's anything you want us to add into the series if there's anything new, I mean a big shout 
shout out to, to Doug Campbell as well while we're on because he's provided us with a list of fights for the next episode. So there's there's more and more people interacting with this series and I'm really glad that people are enjoying listening to, 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 to the fights and I can imagine it gives the same effect on them as it does on us, Johnston, which is as soon as we've recorded the episode and I start putting it together, I think to myself, even though I've already watched the fight again recently... I might actually go and watch it again because it was that good. <laughs> Definitely, mate. I think I probably will. I'll probably watch the second and the third because I think I watched the first one about four times in the last few days. Um, uh, so, and then also the other fights, the Pacquiao fights as well. And it, they're just two credits to the sport and it's just unbelievable. I mean, I just say 36 rounds of just pure action. Obviously, the first one being the better of the three, but go and watch all three. Trust me. Sort it out for your evening. Just literally have a, have a Marco... Antonio Barrera, Eric Morelli's night. Watch all three, get a few beers in, and just put your feet up and enjoy it. Because um, I will, I have been. So yeah, that's that's what I'm telling the viewers to go and do tonight or tomorrow. So guys, thanks so much for listening to the episode. As always, find us on social media at BTR Boxing Pod on Twitter and on Facebook BTR Boxing Podcast. You can subscribe to the episode feed on Apple Podcasts, on Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify. We're on there. Please, if you're listening still at this point, it takes you one or two minutes to go on there to subscribe to the feed to get all the latest episodes. We really appreciate it when you share it around social media. It really helps us grow the podcast and we do need it because we are truly independent. We have no backing from any big companies giving us a studio to sit in here and do this and we would really love to get there one day so we would really appreciate your support so thanks so much for listening guys and we'll see you on the next episode of legendary nights and right now thomas hurts is an open book for ray leonard backs up against the ropes this is one of the most unusual calls by a referee in the history of the sport the first loss a tremendous victory